In this episode of It's Me or the Dog, Victoria Stillwell takes on the Dombrowski family, yeah, that's and they're not so great Danes. I have never met anybody whose instincts with dogs are so wrong. Wow. <laughs> when Jody and Rick's kids left home, they were banking on a quiet life. See? But Harley has changed everything. Ow. This 150-pound Great Dane is out of control. Ow, ow! And he's driving a wedge between husband and wife. Don't let him get hurt. You worried about him getting hurt? She's had enough of the dog's bad manners. All right, all Just right. Just time to get down! Say. But he thinks it's all a joke. <laughs> no, no, no. Get... Can Victoria rein in the chaos? <laughs> Do you think it would bite? I gotta say no. <gasps> and save 22 whoa, years whoa. of marriage? Oh, it's like a big joke to him. That was vicious. My feelings don't count. If you don't want to listen to your wife, you're gonna listen to me. Victoria Stillwell has been training problem dogs for over 13 years in the UK. Now she's here saving American families from their unruly dogs. Without boundaries or leadership, bad habits can quickly develop. And once those habits become ingrained in a dog's behavior, they can be very difficult to change. Victoria arrives to observe the family's problems with the dog. Jody and Rick's son moved away years ago, but their daughter still has to deal with Harley's behavior when she comes home from college. Hi. Excuse us. Oh. Well, come here. No, 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 Jing. Come on, guys. Hello. Hi, I'm Rick. Nice to meet you, Nice Victoria. to meet you. Hi, I'm Victoria. Great to meet you. Harley and, and Abby. Are they horses or dogs? Straight away when I walked through the door, I saw Harley jump all over Rick. But he has a big dog to be jumping up. That's 150 pounds, six feet tall, huge. More like a horse than a dog. If Harley's rambunctious, Victoria sees that their other dog, Abby, is quite the opposite. She was a people person. Right, and now, and now, and now this is it. Laser depressed. Right. The whole purpose of getting him was to make her better because she was sad our other Dane died. Uh, Apollo was with us for many years. He was just a fantastic, big, beautiful, great Dane. So when Apollo died, um, broke my heart, broke Abby's heart, and now I'm gonna cry because. So we brought in another dog to make things better. He brought in another dog to make things better. Oh, you didn't? I did not. I totally resent Rick for this because I did not want another dog. How old is Harley? He's three. Three years old. Yep. And he was oh. a rescue. And what, from what we've been told, he's lived outside all his life. He's lived outside? Yes, outside. He was chained outside, so the chains were too tight. So every time he moved, oh. it would create okay. where he had, like, chain marks. He's put on about 25 pounds since we got him. So he was very thin? Yes. yes. Yeah. Some people treat dogs so badly. Yeah, it, it's horrible. We've always gotten dogs from rescues, so this is probably our fourth dog from rescues. OK. And, and big dogs, and we're used but, to big dogs. Nice. Can't so. get bigger than a great day, <laughs> can you? Yeah. Yes. And these big dogs have big appetites. I usually keep a lot of stuff in here. Oh, you keep food in the microwave? Yes. If it's on the counter, it's gone. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. You did that to me last time. Come on. So usually I have to throw a couple pieces of bread away. I find out the hard way after I eat my sandwich. I'm not going to eat a meal in your house. And Victoria's not the only one that feels that way. I know Jody loves having people over, but she's embarrassed, and, and she's pulled between her husband and the dog and her friends, and something something needs to be done. Harley. Hey, hey, hey. Growls at my cousin, growls at my friend. No growling. You're back. Go sit down. And now they won't come anymore. Harley's eating habits aren't the only off-putting thing about the household. It's a little yes. stinky, isn't it's it? It's a little yes. stinky. And I, and I... You couldn't walk one foot before stepping on another stain of poop or stain of urine. It was disgusting. It's not Harley's fault. He spent his whole life on the end of a chain outside. Outside, he can pee and poop wherever he wants. He's never been taught. The smell is one of the many things that daughter Nicole is happy to leave behind. I 
love Harley. I think he's a really cool dog, but I'm happy that I'm away because like, I don't have to deal with his jumping, his biting. You're at college now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you said, you don't have to deal with him that much. I know, I love it. Go ahead, come on, come on, go ahead. Why don't you just fill their water bowls up, honey? So Rick is pretty lazy when it comes to filling their water bowl, so he thinks it's just easier to let them drink out of the toilet. Encouraging them to drink out of the toilet? Do you use cleaning yes. products? Oh. How do you know the bleach is gone? Upstairs, Victoria sees who's the boss in the bedroom. And it's usually a race to get in bed. Do you ever try and... Get him off? Yes. Yeah. Come on, Harley. Come on. Oh. So that's what he usually does when you try and get him off. OK. So this is what we deal with. Yeah. Does he sleep with you? We don't have a choice. There's he, he owns it. It all started because the first night he came home, I begged him, please don't let the dog on the bed. So what does he do? Oh, let's just let him sleep on here one night. And so from the one night, this is where we're at. Well, he looks very comfortable. He is he? very comfortable. So where do you sleep? We sleep in little balls and around Harley. If you touch him with your feet at night, it's he does, you know, he doesn't bite you, but he's just Oh, so, but remember the err, that's a right. warning. He he tees on us like a little baby, so he doesn't he doesn't bite hard. I don't know if he's got a mean bone in his body. He's gonna I do. <laughs> what? You think right. that's it? <laughs> Excuse me? What do you think that was? And and that's what he is. He, he you know, it's like a big joke to him. Oh, uh, he's not uh, gonna hurt uh. you. That was vicious. Okay, Rick. Do you think he would bite? I gotta say no. <gasps> Rick doesn't think that his dog's behavior is that serious. Jody does. Um, I, I think Rick is a little blind, and I think he needs to wake up. Have you asked Rick to get him out of the bed? Oh my god, it's a fight every night. Um, can you show me how you would get him off the bed? Come on. Come on, don't, don't growl me. Come on. Come on. Come, come on. No! You made me jump. So that didn't scare you? You didn't think he'd bite you if you didn't jump? Let's, Come let's, on. back back away from him, back away from him, back away from him. I'm gonna listen to you. All right, yeah, because your dog just snapped at you. Right, his best buddy, his and cool the next, dog. The next level of snap is bite. We're not talking play biting here, we're talking about bite. And then okay. you're really gonna know about it you're really gonna know what a bite feels like. Harley's guarding the bedroom location at the moment, but I have no doubt that it's gonna translate to other areas of the house too, if they don't nip this in the bud. But despite Harley snapping, Rick thinks Jody is overreacting. Maybe she's a little bit more afraid of the dog than I am. I, I, I again, I don't feel that he's got a, a bad bone in his body. I just can't see him really hurting anybody. I can't believe you're defending the dog and making light of this. He lunged with teeth. Oh. And Rick still just thinks he's playing. He's done it before. He growls and he puts his mouth over your hand and that's Rick, all he does. Has he snarled and had his lips up like that before? Maybe, I don't know. What do you mean maybe? I don't know. No. No. I don't know. No, he's never had his lips up, teeth showing like that. The only time he's bit harder is trying to play with him. That's the only time. <sighs> he just doesn't get it. It's really weird to see them fight, because they usually, they haven't fought a lot when I was growing up or anything, I guess. But like seeing them fight over like such a stupid thing like a dog, it's just really weird. Well, that's the third time I've seen him viciously lunge at me in bed, in two days, in yeah. Two days. That's crazy, that's the only place he does it. Rick is in complete denial. I mean, what he's actually doing is enabling Harley's negative behaviors. Goodness me, if Harley suffers from really bad aggressive response and he bites somebody, that could be curtains for Harley. This is serious. I have no doubt that that dog will bite if pushed too far. He gave you a very clear warning. That's your serious opinion? Yeah. Uh, really? Really? One thousand trillion million percent. I, I, I have no doubt. He is going to bite. He will make contact with your skin. And this time, it will not be play. He will mean business. Because he's never broken skin. 
Well, actually, your arm had broken skin. Well, he caught me once. This is serious. And if you don't want to listen to your wife, you're going to listen to me. Coming up, Rick is in denial. But how will he deal with Victoria's verdict? Oh. Dog expert Victoria Stillwell has been observing the chaos caused by Great Dane Harley. Dad Rick constantly defends the dog, but everyone else has had enough. It's really important to me that like my family gets help with this dog because I know that that will help my family and that we will be like back to like a normal, regular family that we used to be. With Nicole heading back to college, Victoria gives Jody and Rick her assessment of where they've gone wrong. I spent a day observing you with your dogs, and there are a lot of issues here that need addressing. And until you understand those issues, things are never going to get better. And I'm looking at you, Rick. A major enabler of negative behavior. Wow. I have to say, I have never met anybody whose instincts with dogs are so wrong. It just, it seems to me that you're not listening. You're not listening to your family. You're not listening to your dog. Jody told you, I don't want another dog. Yes, she did. And Jody, what did Apollo mean to you? Everything. Apollo was my life. Do you feel like you ha have had enough time to mourn? No. Him? No. Rick just doesn't get it. Rick, how do you feel when you hear Jody saying that she doesn't think you understand? It's true, I look at things differently. I get past things a lot quicker. And I thought that coming into the house and everybody's so sad that if you bring another dog in, it would cheer the house back up. We need your help, big time. It's a problem. OK. This is obviously very emotional for you. Mm hmm Why are you feeling such emotion? Because I try to do everything I can for my family. And that's why I tried to fix things. And it backfired. I can see how you just wanted everything to be OK. And you wanted your family to feel better. And you wanted Abby to feel better. I'm going to help you to improve Harley's life with you, to make him a happier dog, because I don't think he's that happy at the moment. The poor dog. His life was on a chain, mm -hmm. most likely on concrete. You got a dog that has been damaged, that has suffered, and you can't enable the suffering. You can't pander to the suffering. You have to go, OK? I'm your new family, and I'm going to help you succeed. I'm going to take you under my wing, Harley, and I'm going to show you now how people can love dogs, how you can be taken care of. Is there anything that you want to say to Jody, Rick? I, I'm sorry, because I just never felt the way that you've been feeling. And I'm sorry you're afraid, and I know how upset you are and frustrated you are. I don't know what to say. I love you. I'm sorry. The training starts now. Are you ready? I am ready. Absolutely. Yes. The following day, Victoria gets to work. I wanted to show you this because I think it perfectly illustrates your family. I'm thinking, oh no, what does she have in store for us? We're in trouble. It's going to be little check marks of all the things we're doing wrong. Rick and Jody, very happy. And here are your two children, relaxed. And then you have some dogs added to that. Abby just lying at your feet, hanging out. And then along comes. <laughs> Harley. <laughs> That's kind of what it is. It is like Harley has become that really annoying friend that just will not leave you alone. <laughs> yes. You want to be together, but Harley's there keeping you apart, especially in the bed. You want to cook a meal, but Harley's right there in the kitchen. You want to have friends over, but Harley's right there trying to steal the food and growling. 
Victoria, you hit it right on the nose. I mean, just, just the way his face is right there with us and his arms are flying. He's just a crazy guy. You got it. That's exactly how it is. Harley's got to be there on our backs all the time, center of attention. The training that we're going to be doing is going to help change this dynamic from the dog that is coming between you to the dog that can live alongside you. That would be great. Wouldn't that sound great? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Rick and Jody laughed when they saw the picture of Harley between them, but it underlines a point. He is coming between them. He is causing arguments, and he is being a pain. And how are you? Changing Harley's position in the family begins with new restrictions on his movement around the house. First thing I'm going to do. He's no longer allowed in the carpeted areas of the house. This door is going to be closed. Oh. Follow me. Those carpets are saturated in urine and feces, however well they're cleaned. Also, Harley is very happy with the carpet underneath his feet. It is more comfortable for him to go to the toilet on that kind of ground. So we, we need to keep him away from there. Harley especially is not allowed into any of those rooms with the carpet unless he's being supervised. Let's go downstairs. Closing doors and restricting Harley's access to the house has another important purpose. Who's got my face down? Currently, Rick and Jody are mauled by an overexcited Harley whenever they return home from work. So Victoria wants to change the rules of engagement for greetings. I want Harley to know that the only way that he's going to be able to greet Jody and Rick when they come in from work at the end of the day is when he's calm. The door training is going to be incredibly important to teach that. I have a pouch of food, and I have this great rubber toy, and in it, I put peanut butter. When you both come back, Harley's so excited, and all of that excitement is on you. His main focus is to say hello to you. What we need him to do is to A, be calmer, but B, to refocus that attention on this. I want to say hi to you, but all of my it's not going to be on you, it's going to be on this. All right, I'm going to show you what I mean. I want him to back away from the door before I go through it. This is called catching a behavior. I'm not asking him to do anything. I'm just waiting for a behavior that I like. And when I see that behavior, I'll reward it. Harley's reward is for the door to open. I'm going to catch any head turns, body turns, backing up, anything that takes him slightly away from the door. This dog is very motivated by attention and praise. Good boy. The method of training that I use doesn't impose a person's will upon the dog, it actually gets the dog to think for itself. See how he's working out? Good boy. It's a real test of patience. But after what seems like an eternity, Victoria's message gets through. Good boy. Good boy. Back, 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 back. Good boy. Now I'm just teaching him, if you back up, you get more. Mm -mm -mm. Now it's Rick's turn. It's very important for you. When you go in, tell him to back up. Make him sit for his treat. OK. Good boy, good boy. Back up, back, 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 back. Good boy. It's very different to the greeting yeah. Rick usually gets. I am so excited. It, you know what? It, it's better than winning the lottery. Harley was actually backing away from the door to let them enter. That's the first time that's ever happened. And I think Rick was very proud of his dog. Good boy, good boy. Back. Dog expert Victoria Stillwell has started to train Harley, the wayward Great Dane. Fighting me hard. He's learned some impulse control when he sees Rick. Go, good. But Victoria's next rule may prove harder to adjust to. Whenever you are cooking in the kitchen or there's food out in the kitchen, the dogs are out. 
Currently, both dogs steal food at will. It's unhygienic, and it no! needs to change. I'm now going to teach your dogs to stay out of the kitchen. So I'm just going to start like this. Out. Stay. What I'm teaching them now is that out means they have to go out of the kitchen and stay out of the kitchen. I'm also giving them another command to mark the fact that they're out there, and that's the stay. The problem with this training is that you can make a chain. The dog gets to realize, oh, if I come in the kitchen and then she tells me to go out, I get a treat. They put two and two together, so then they come into the kitchen, you tell them to go out, give them a treat. So what I want to do is I want them to be out there for a while, and then I will give them a treat. Good. Good. Stay. Now I want you to take food out of the fridge, because this is going to make it harder for them. You are now preparing food, and they have to stay out. Once the food comes, keeping the dogs at bay gets harder. Stay. Up. Out. Stay. Dirty take over. Stay. Out. Out. Stay. Stay. Eventually, Abby and Harley get the message. Stay. This is what you want at meal times. Is he okay there? Yeah, you know what? Sometimes maybe the rules are bent a little bit, but he's lying down in the doorway. The dog's eating habits may be improving, but their choice of drink needs to change too. No more drinking out of oh, toilets. Is that cool? Rick, could you go fill it up, please, with 1.2 gallons of water up to that line? There you go. Encouraged by Rick, both dogs' only source of water was the family's toilet. There you go. Do you want to bring Holly in? Mama's dead. Good boy. <laughs> no more toilet bowls, Holly. Next, Victoria turns to the most serious issue of all, Harley's presence in the marital bed. She's cutting off access for Harley and giving him a new raised bed to sleep on. Baby rails. I put these guardrails up because I'm hoping Harley can't jump over them. Okay, Rick, do you want to come out with Harley? Here I come. Whoa. Okay, Rick, could you go over to the bed that I've set up for Harley over there? Say, bed, give him the treat. Bed, bed. That's it. Lots of praise. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Rick, will you just come into this bed? Let's just ignore him. You know, she's not going to be with the dog. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, away. Good boy. Let's just ignore him. He doesn't know what to do with himself. But this is going to be a little strange for him because he can't be with you anymore. Now, if he gets clever and he decides to jump over this part, then we'll just put a rail up here too. So tonight, I want to see what happens. I think Harley's going to wander around a little bit and I'm hoping that he's gonna find his place. Before she leaves for the night, Victoria encourages Harley to try out his new bed. Sit. Lie down. Settle. Good boy. I'm hoping, and I'll see in the camera, that he eventually settles down. Good night, Harley. Sleep tight. Thanks. Thank you. Victoria has banned Harley from Rick and Jody's bed. Now it's the morning after. Will Rick and Jody awake to a new day in paradise? Oh, Harley, you stupid dog. Ah! Was that door closed? I don't know. I don't know. It smells. <laughs> but somebody, we won't point fingers, broke the cardinal rule. Rick left the door open, so Harley left us another present. Nice at 8 o'clock in the morning.
Victoria's back to find out how the night went. Hey, hi. Hi, Hello, Harley. Hello, darling. It's the first night since Harley arrived that Rick and Jody have had the bed to themselves. However, Harley's behavior is still concerning Jody. Harley growled. I'm not sure if he growled at Abby. He's tried to steal our blanket. He paced a lot. So last night was a rough night. Victoria wants to see for herself if Harley is a cause for concern. So isn't it interesting? Mm -hmm. He's comfy, and Abby's the one that's moving around. And I think he just got startled there. He was asleep, dead asleep, and Abby's movement startled him. So that doesn't concern me at all. In fact, at this point, he's been on the bed for four hours. Abby's gone onto Harley's bed, and he goes to Abby's bed. This is good, though, because he's not growling at her. Mm -hmm. That was a big thing. We were just worried that, you know, when we were trying to sleep, he was growling at, at Abby. Right. But I was actually quite relieved, because she showed us that Harley just got startled by Abby. So it was really nice to see that he's not as vicious as I thought he was. House training a dog can be challenging for two working people, but Victoria has a strategy for Jody and Rick. One of you has to be in charge, and you can split it. It'll be me. Of taking It'll be me. Harley and Abby mm -hmm. out 15 minutes walk around the block in the morning. Because when you take a dog outside of his territory, the smells that he smells will make him want to urinate more because he'll want to mark. And it can also, the exercise, the stimulation, can make him want to poop. I hope that that empties, empties, empties him out. So that by the time you come back, with all the doors closed, the fact there are any wooden floors here, that the, he will start peeing and pooping less. It would be great if you could get somebody to come back here in the middle of the day and let him out. You're gone eight hours. I think it's too long for this dog to hold it. But again, I mean, that's up to you. And Victoria thinks more frequent walks will also help Abby. Because I am concerned about Abby being a little depressed. It's always the more badly behaved dog mm -hmm. that gets most of the attention. Th that's 100% true, because he's always in our face, and now she's always sitting in the corner by herself. Oh, look at that. Oh, now, Abby, that's gorgeous. This is her favorite grass. <laughs> Great Danes are much more comfortable walking at a faster pace. Mm -hmm. Can we just do a faster pace as we're walking here? Come on, boy. That's where, that's where he's getting the most. That's okay. where he's getting the exercise. Okay. If he starts biting on you, okay, no. stop. Don't put your hand in his mouth. I, I push his mouth away. Yes, exactly. Which is, this is a chew toy. <laughs> Yeah, he has been using it as a chew toy. Yeah, <laughs> when his mouth goes over your hand, you're going like that. Come on, more of it. Okay. No, it's an immediate stop. Body language is so important when you're communicating with dogs. At the moment, Rick is encouraging and exacerbating Harley's excited behavior by being excitable himself. You have got to be a bit more okay. official. All right. A bit more leader-like. She's the tough one in the house. <laughs> That's why he doesn't do it to me as much. Yeah, you see, dogs know a softy when they, you, come on. And I think dogs are so much more secure when they have a confident leader to follow. The best leaders are the ones that lead without force. Right. That's what you're doing. That's what them. I want to be. I want to lead without force. To show Rick how to do this, Victoria wants to address his body language. All right, Rick, I wanted to have a little one-on-one -on -one time. I knew this was gonna happen sometime. Yeah. Because I think it's time we talked a little bit about your body language. I think a lot of the way you are with Harley exacerbates his crazy behavior with you. Oh, come on. Come on. Okay, all right, all right. It's time to get down. Hey. You can't, in one breath, reward him for jumping up on your shoulders and then in another say he can't do it. He either can or he can't. And I think it's best for this dog not to. So that's there has enough. to be a no jumping rule. And that's where body language is so important. Now, when I come through the door, 
Harley sniffs me and he walks away. And my body language is very strong and I'm calm. And I think that's what you have to be to Harley. And I also want, when you speak to him, to use one word commands rather than out, 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 just say out. And again, the way your body is, out. So stand like that and just say out. Out. That's it. And your eyes, focusing right on his eyes, you're giving a gesture, mm -hmm. you're saying one vocal command, your body is speaking volumes, and he's going to understand you. Because you've been so confusing. Right. He doesn't speak your language. We have to learn his. I mean, is there ever a point in time that I can go back to, like, kind of giving him a hug or...? You can give him a hug by you going down to his level. OK. But never, never when he comes up to you. No more encouraging that, OK? Mm -hmm. It's really important that Rick learns this body language and changes because it's going to help Harley. It's also going to keep Rick and other people safer. Victoria has helped Rick and Jody get a handle on Harley, their wayward Great Dane. Lie down. For the next few days, Rick and Jody will carry out the training alone. Before she leaves, Victoria wants to remind them of the new house rules. I'm going to leave you now, but there are things that you have to work on because I want to see major improvements when I come back. Make sure the dogs are never in the kitchen when you're eating or when you're preparing food. Keep Harley out of the bed. Don't let Harley jump up on you, Rick. And Jody, help him with that. One more thing. Victoria also has a challenge for Rick and Jody. I've got some new bedding for you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> when I come back, I don't want to see one dog hair on that duvet. <laughs> Not one. Best Thank of luck. You. We'll make you Thank proud. You. All yes. right. Yep. OK, bye. Bye. We want to make sure we get a good grade from her. So we're going to work very hard with Harley. So next time she comes in to, to visit, either he's going to be a, he's going to be a good dog. You know, we can actually share a comforter now. Really? You can look, but don't touch. So it's so nice to have a bedspread on your bed instead of like a comforter that the dog is eating and chewed on. It's so nice to come up and see your pretty bed and see your room look nice once again. Away. The king of the bed has been dethroned. Let's check in on Jody and Rick and see how they're doing with Abby and Harley. Victoria sees that with Rick better able to control their dogs, ow, ow, ow. he's launching a charm offensive to woo his wife. I think this will make things up. You sleep, that's better. Honey. Hello. <laughs> what is this? I came home and he had dinner. I was very surprised. Rick doesn't do that too often. The dogs make a last bid to turn it into dinner for four. Stay. But Rick Stay. calmly takes charge. Thank you, darling. I made it all myself. It looks beautiful. I owe you a big time for letting me keep this crazy guy. We were able to sit down, have a nice meal together, talk, not have to worry about the dog saying, get out, get out, get away, pushing them away. What a nice change. Rick's putting the effort in, and it shows. Jody's getting her husband back, and Abby and Harley are behaving themselves. I'm hoping that this is a one step out of the doghouse. Rick and Jody can now enjoy evenings together, but daytime issues aren't completely resolved. They're keeping up with the door training. But once they get inside their home, they discover that Harley has found new places to poop. We know it's you, Harley. We know it's you. You. Big dogs, big poops. This thing weighs like 10 pounds. I need to get back to Rick and Jody because it looks like they need more training for themselves. Rick and Jody are getting ready for Victoria's return visit. Stay. I mean, he's crossed the line a little bit. But he's laying down. But he's laying down. Hi, I'm fine. 
Nice, nice. To, welcome nice you guys. Nice to see you. Welcome. You ready? <gasps> oh, all right. Stay. 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 Oh, it was so lovely to come back and see Rick and Jody and this tea party they had set up for me. <laughs> A British tea party with scones and tea. And Holly stayed out of the kitchen. This is very impressive. We took control without having to be mean or nasty or yell. It changed our whole world and it changed his whole world. He just became a relaxed, mellow dog. It's like the stress has gone out of the house. Mm -hmm. Abby's happier. Yeah. Yes. Abby tried to play with him the other day. <gasps> yep, she got really rambunctious with him. Yeah. It was awesome. Okay, good, good. It's a real change in Harley's manners. I'm not gonna eat a meal in your house. But the proof of the progress is in the eating. And I could eat without the fear of there being dog slobber or hair. It was fantastic. And when Nicole comes home from college, she's also in for a treat. Hi. Hey. Hi, Hi, Nicole. Hi, Harley. Nicole was a little hesitant because I think she thought there wasn't going to be much of a change. But I think she was totally surprised. Stay. He's staying. He's staying. Can you believe that? That is crazy. I cannot believe how good Harley is doing. He did not jump up on me. He did not attack me. Nothing. He's been so good. I'm so happy. And now when I tell him to get out, most of the time I don't even need to guide him with my body anymore. I'll just tell him out and he'll just turn around and get out. He knows the drill. It's actually a smart dog. He is smart. He's a dumb owner. He's a smart dog. <laughs> Rick, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Victoria is back to see Rick and Jody's progress in training Harley. This is very impressive. But not everything has gone so well. Now tell me about the poop. He's been pooping in the house uh, up closer to the front door area. It's very interesting to me that he's pooping by the front door. And I think he's trying to tell you something. He needs to go out. I can say with 1,000% certainty that Harley will never, ever be house trained unless somebody can come and let him out in the middle of the day. I can see if I can work that out. Come home at lunchtime. Morning until evening, eight hours, nine hours. It's too long to leave him. He's still learning. And when you're house training a dog, you've got to give them ample opportunity to get out and do their business outside. Harley has got some important business to attend to inside. Jody's friends are coming over. And in the past, they were on the receiving end of Harley's bad manners. No, Harley, no, hey, no, you're bad. I really hope he does well. I want them to see that all our hard work is paying off, because I kind of have a feeling that they're doubting it. Yeah. Want to grab the cups and the tea? No, I leave that here. OK. Good, how are you? Good. Good. Nice to see you. As soon as we walked in, I noticed Harley wasn't jumping up on us and wasn't in our face. Stay. Stay. Food is free of dog hair, free of slobber. Wow. If Harley can continue his good behavior, Jody's friends might become regular visitors once again. Good boy. Thank you. Away. Good boy. That's a very good boy. <laughs> no, believe wow. it. You've been working hard, obviously. You've been working. And it's a different dog. And you're smiling, you're happy. <laughs> it is amazing how quick this dog went from this wild, obnoxious, aggressive dog to a, a very docile dog like his breed should be. I'm happy for you guys, I really Thank am. Thank you. I can't wait to come back. <laughs> good, boy. good boy, Harley. So far, Harley's good boy status is intact. But what's been going on upstairs? When I went up there, I didn't want to see one dog hair on that new quilt I gave them. No dog, dog hair. hair. At all. <laughs> and there wasn't. Look, he's just gone straight Down. to his bed there. Absolutely, he understands. Can you get onto your bed? I just want to see what he does. I wanted to take one of the bed guards down to see how Harley would react, see what he does. Harley's behavior is very different from Victoria's first visit. No, 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 get down. Get then he saw the bed as his territory. 
Now, he's happy to stay off it. Away. I know that in the future, Rick and Jody will be able to sleep without the bed guards. But it's going to take a while. I want Harley to have a habit of sleeping in his own bed, set him up for success, make it easy for him to do well. And then when he does have a habit of sleeping in his own bed, the bed guards on Rick and Jody's bed can come down. I am ecstatic to have my bed back. <laughs> you don't understand how nice it is to get into a clean bed, no dog, next to your husband. What could be better than that? Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.